Hello and welcome to the Vivado Quick Take covering the Xilinx Tickle Store. The Xilinx Tickle Store is an open source repository of useful scripts that allows customers, partners, and Xilinx to share and reuse code in an effort to improve designer efficiency. This video is intended to be a brief introduction to Tickle Store concepts and will provide a detailed benefits overview. First, we'll spend a little time on background explaining what the Tickle Store is. Next, we'll move into installation and usage scenarios. Then, we'll review how you can make contributions to the Tickle Store. And lastly, I'll show you where to obtain additional information. Tickle is an acronym for Tool Command Language. It is a key part of the Vivado Design Suite. It is the common scripting language that provides automation and analysis capabilities that are extremely powerful. It is also the basis for Timing Constraint Format XDC and happens to be the de facto standard for scripting languages in the semiconductor design world. Its importance for constraining and debug cannot be overstated. Since the introduction of Vivado in 2012, there has been a dramatic proliferation of tickle code that performs customized reports and analysis, provides low-level control of compilation flows, and provides workarounds for unforeseen problems with designs and tools. Xilinx has recognized that much of this tickle code could benefit our user base if there was a convenient way to share it. Born from this idea is the Xilinx Tickle Store which was created to provide a method to publish and share useful tickle scripts that many people are developing. This code, by its very nature of being scripts, is great for others to use, or at least to follow as an example of what others are doing. These features are not fully productized in the Vivado tool because they tend to be specific to smaller numbers of customers, or things that have high degrees of customization possibilities. Since the vision for these scripts is to be user developed, we want to provide some control over the publishing to ensure some basic levels of quality and review. Users should be expected to review themselves before actually using any code on a production flow. However, providing some basic level of testing will allow us to provide reasonable assurances against publishing obviously malicious code. In addition, we wanted to make very easy to use Tickle, so we provide native integration in Vivado. You don't have to search the web and manually source scripts to use it. Simply find it by browsing a repository view directly within Vivado, much like you do for IP, and then click the install button and you can call the commands. We wanted to provide some basic coding standards, so once a user is familiar with how to use the code from one source, they can expect similar interfaces from other developers. And there should be some basic expectations about documentation of the individual commands and how to get help about what a given function does. All of this will serve to make it easy to use these scripts and therefore help with the adoption and reuse, but they are not terribly cumbersome for developers. Most would agree they already adhere to most of the guidelines out there. So what is an app in the Xilinx Tickle Store? At the most basic level, an app is a module or grouping of Tickle code that provides functionality which extends and complements the native Tickle commands of Vivado. Usually, an app groups a series of Tickle procs which are procedural functions and are commonly used by Tickle developers to promote code reuse. An app has a single owner who is responsible for publishing and maintaining the code, and usually all of the code is grouped in an app so that it provides similar functionality or supports a common purpose. Examples could be collections of utilities or a group of code that helps to perform a specific task. An app consists of one or more tickle files in which procs are defined. In addition, there are some infrastructure files that need to be packaged and installed. This is done with a couple of other Tickle files. There is a catalog file that is implemented in XML, and it provides some information for Vivado to display to the user. And finally, 
there can be a graphical icon delivered with an app. To a user, this is not a terribly important feature unless you eventually wish to consider contributing code. The Tickle App Repository is a collection of applications. These apps are installed individually and each may contain many Tickle commands that are implemented using Prox. The repository is hosted on a third-party web server called GitHub. Additionally, we ship the latest version of all current apps with every Vivado release, so there's really no need to have internet access if you wish to install and utilize these apps. Vivado provides a repository viewer that is accessed from an icon on the Getting Started page, or by going to the Tools menu and selecting Xilinx Tickle Store from the menu. On the next slide, I'll show a more detailed view of the repository. Each app has an install button beside it. When you install an app, the commands in the app are now available at the Tickle command prompt, just like built-in commands. You can use the help command to get basic information about the command, such as description of what it does, what the arguments are, and what it returns. Commands in an installed app are persistent, which means every time you launch Vivado, the apps remain installed and functional. There is a refresh mechanism for the repository catalog of apps. When a developer has an updated version of the app, he or she can publish it independently of Vivado release schedules. Code updates will come with an update version number, and if a later version of an installed app is available, there will be an upgrade button next to it in the repository view. Vivado will only display and install the latest version of an app. This simplifies the user's interface and makes it much easier to use. The refresh capability can be disabled if your company wishes to restrict internet access by Vivado. The Xilinx Tickle Store supports local repositories, which means you can develop your own apps or make modifications to existing apps in a local sandbox or directory on disk. This is done to allow development and testing but can also be used if you do not wish to publicly deliver scripts but may want to share a repository internally within your company or development team. Here you can see the repository view for the Xilinx Tickle Store. The list of apps appears to the left and you'll notice that each app has an install button for simple one-click installation. When you select an app, the details of that app are displayed to the right, and within those details, you can see a list of procs or commands that are part of that app. Additionally, there's an overall description, author information, and release and version information that's displayed. Each proc also has a basic description beside the name of the command. Installed procs contain similar information. Each proc is hyperlinked and when clicked allows you to see the help information for that command as well as assign it to the create custom command feature within Vivado. This allows you to add a custom button on the Vivado toolbar that executes the given command which proves to be very useful. You can also uninstall apps and upgrade an app at any time from the same repository view. To access a proc that is part of an app, you call the proc name using its fully qualified namespace identifier. This is a standard Tickle facility, and it may seem complicated at first, but it is used to ensure that no two apps publish conflicting command names. The namespaces allow developers to name the procs however they like, provided they are unique within the app. You would also pass any required arguments to the proc just as you would for any other tickle command. Installed apps register their procs within Vivado, which means they plug directly into our tickle interpreter and behave as standard Vivado commands would. The key item of note is the help infrastructure. You can call your command with dash help and it will list out the information about proper command usage. Additionally, you can pass the proc name to the help command and get the same information. Currently, each user has to install an app, but once this is done, it is available for all of your sessions. This also includes runs that are launched, so you can use customized hook scripts that refer to app commands. Hook scripts are described within the Vivado user guides, but in short, 
They are used to customize synthesis or implementation flows by inserting scripts into the defined steps of the flow. If you know for certain that a proc name in a given app will not conflict with any other command, you can import it into the global namespace. The global namespace is essentially the top level of tickle commands and called without the use of uniquifiers. Okay, so how is this code going to be supported? What if you discover a bug or you have an enhancement request? Apps in the App Store, since they are user developed and user supported, this means that the app developer or other knowledgeable people familiar with the code or Vivado APIs will end up supporting it. The model is similar to Linux, where the user community develops and supports. For the most part, Tickle is fairly straightforward to understand, and users can always locally clone the repository and customize the code to suit their needs. If a user discovers a bug or wants to request an enhancement, there is infrastructure in place within the hosting service on github.com. You can go to the source code on the website and file an issue. It will email the app developer and others will see the issue and assign it to the correct person to fix and close. In addition, Xilinx hosts various discussion forums on Xilinx.com and there are forums specific to Tickle. This is a prime place to ask general or specific questions about Tickle APIs and code in the App Store. There are many highly knowledgeable and very active users on the forums that can quickly help to solve any issue or answer any question that you may have. Alright, so what do you need to do if you have some cool script idea and you'd like to contribute it to the repository? Well, there are some basic expectations that are common to all the apps. You need to use procs and arguments in your code. And this is generally accepted methodology for reusing Tickle. You need to provide some basic documentation, not a lot, but enough that someone can follow what you did and figure out how to use it. You need to provide some basic smoke test regression tests that show the code working using our built-in tutorial designs or a small test case that can be uploaded. And we have a tool called a linter which checks the code for syntax problems and some other basic requirements. These checks must be passed prior to allowing the code into the repository. And again, to make sure there is some basic standardization of the apps. When it comes time to publish via GitHub, what you need to do is clone the master repository to a local directory using the standard Git version control. There are good tutorials for explaining how to do this on GitHub. You would then add in the files or make modifications to an existing app according to the directory structure we've set up. Then you test your code to make sure everything is working and it passes our linting tests. At which point you can submit a pull request on github.com. This formally tells organizers that you think you are ready to publish. You will need to have approval for new apps and this can be achieved via an email process. There is a Xilinx employee called a gatekeeper who will evaluate your submission and decide if the app meets our guidelines. If your contribution is a modification to an existing app, this process will involve the app owner to review and merge the code and update the version number for their own app. If all is good, we will merge your code into the repository and push it out live, at which point Anyone who hits the refresh button in the repository catalog will see the updated version is available. To keep things manageable, we don't expect to be able to do this any more frequently than on two-week intervals. This process is wiki documented on GitHub, which I'll give you a point or two in a few slides. As I mentioned before, the repository is hosted on a third-party website called github.com. Xilinx has a corporate account there with various users and administrators, and incidentally, this is also the location of our Petalinux distribution. Of course, anyone using the Tickle Store is not required to visit this third-party website. We abstract all of that away from the user and do the handshaking under the hood of the tool to download and synchronize the catalog. If someone wishes to contribute to the store, however, they would need to sign up for a free GitHub account. 
Simply browsing the catalogs and wikis does not require an account. The important legal information here, however, is the licensing model for code released in the repository. All code uploaded to the store is open source, which means it is freely redistributable by anyone. It is released under a BSD 2 clause license. If this is not acceptable, then you do not have the option to develop derivative work and keep it local within the company using our local repository feature. Contributions that do not execute the licensing agreement with a digital signature will not be published to the public repository. For those of you who might be interested in contributing to the greater good, I'd like to first say thank you, and we have some more detailed information to get you going in this process. Some of the links are listed here. First is the URL to the Tickle Store repository. It is the main landing page for the project, and from there, you can get access to the wiki, readme's, and browse the code directly. Next is a basic tutorial on how to use JIT and GitHub. This is not specific to the Xilinx Tickle Store project, and for anyone familiar with version control or JIT, which is commonly used for Linux development, this should be pretty straightforward stuff. And finally, here's a link to the wiki that explains our contribution process in greater detail. In summary, the Xilinx Tickle Store is definitely open for business. The good news here is that it doesn't cost any money. Everything is completely free and open source. So I recommend that you have a look at some of the apps that are available there. The first few apps are collections of utilities that perform design analysis tasks, reporting functions, and show integration possibilities with other applications such as simulation and other partner applications. These can be used directly or can serve as examples of what is possible, so we hope you'll find this useful. And we certainly expect the catalog to grow over time. If you have some code that you think would be useful for others to leverage, please do consider contributing to the repository. Other users can most definitely benefit from your work, and this makes the community as a whole more efficient. It's definitely a worthwhile cause. There are some items on our roadmap that we'll be releasing soon, such as an enhanced search feature that will enable you to find the relevant code you're looking for. We will also be adding feedback mechanisms to submit reviews and ratings for apps so that users can help identify useful scripts and give kudos to developers. Here are some links to related information which you might find useful. Xilinx offers multiple instructor-led training courses for Vivado, as well as a course specific to Tickle scripting within Vivado. For additional Tickle-related documentation, I recommend referencing the following user guides. UG894 covers using Tickle scripting in Vivado. UG835 is a general command reference on all Vivado Tickle commands. And UG912 is a reference guide to object properties, which is important when working with Tickle objects. If you have any questions that you can't find an answer to, chances are that others may have already answered your questions in the Xilinx Tickle forums. So I highly recommend checking out and participating in the Xilinx Tickle community. Thanks for watching, and as always, please check back at xilinx.com/training/vivado for additional Vivado training.